<laughs> okay. You think you will stay there? I think I probably will, yes. It's, it's, um, it's a comfortable flat, as long as I take care of it. Um, and it's a cheap flat, except that what I save in rent, I spend in taxes, because you try getting back to Clapham of an evening from anywhere in the world, you know. And nobody wants to drive you to Clapham. <laughs> you can't see yourself moving into Chelsea or Knightsbridge or somewhere like that? Well, I mean, I wouldn't mind, you know, if something came along, if something was reasonable. But for the moment, I'm happy there. There's everything I want. And it's a kind of... It's big enough to be a kind of resting place for all the people who were at drama school with me and have now moved out to provincial reps and then come back into London for an audition or something and have nowhere to go. So they pop round and they stay on the floor and it's a general free-for-all, you know. Now, uh, another thing that interests me, I do have a tendency not to want to change your life too much, whatever happens, your way of life? Um, well, my, my person, me, I don't want to change, um, except to kind of find out a bit more about what I am, you know, for my own good. But um, if circumstances change, you know, I'm, I'm very adaptable, I'm ready to go along with them. I was thinking there are very few, there have been a great many, I'll put it this way, there have been a great many Jewish girls and Jewish men who've been persuaded to change their surnames uh, because they were fairly common Jewish names. Suppose you got a contract with Columbia or something like that and they said you must change your name. Mm -hmm. What would you? Well, I've considered it myself. I think it was just laziness the reason I didn't actually. I'm glad now I didn't because it doesn't matter. But I did have a fantastic host of names. I was going to call myself Beverly Westwood at one time because it was a, it was a kind of in-joke because there's outside Hull, there's a strip of land called Beverly Westwood, you see, where all the courting couples go in the evening. And I was going to change my name to Beverly Westwood. And I thought of, I thought of lots of names, but I couldn't find anything I really liked except um, I, Maureen Jeffrey, I thought of at one time. That's my brother's name. I hate to disconnect myself from my name. You know, it's me. Um, and I hate the thought of just having a name that is nothing to do with me. If I could think of some kind of combination where I could get Lippmann in, or Maureen in, or, you know, something, so that all the people back home... I suppose I'm very home-orientated, really, and can't get away from it. Well, I guess it's very good. You know, I think it's, it's great if we can live in a time now where a girl can be called Maureen Lippmann and can be up in the lights. You know, uh -huh. That's a very good thing. Yes. And I, I, I think you should stick to it. You do? Whatever, yeah. Well, I've been... But don't turn on a contract on my account. You know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I just think it's a good Girl idea. Work, yeah. Now, in terms of the future, um, mm -hmm. the indication here, we, Mary, Miss Griffiths hands for this uh, original line, oh, well, like they say, that show business. But, in fact, um, is it as bad as it seems from this article? Or no, it just isn't. I was going to say. It yeah. really isn't. I mean, lovely lady to do the article and everything. But it really is, you know, an angled article to be in the paper. I mean, nobody wants to read about a girl who's done a film and is now going into rep, which is, in fact, what I was, you know, going back to Watford to do Streetcar Named Desire and loot and play very good parts. And I happen to have two weeks out of work, which are the only two weeks, in fact, since leaving drama school. So I was, you know, I'm, I say anything that comes into my mind. And so I was kind of saying, oh, you know, here I am on the bread line and making a joke of it and everything. And it taught me a lesson. It taught me that, you know, you've got to, you've got to talk up a bit. And you, know, you must make jokes to newspaper ladies. And you don't <laughs> make jokes, right. <laughs> they take them seriously. Mm. Uh, what does the future hold, then, as far as you can see now? Well, I must say, I, you know, I, I did expect that, I was saying before, I expected the sky to fall after up the junction, you know. It's a super part. Um, and I kind of expected everyone to be queuing up with contracts at the door when it came out. Um, there are lots, a couple of good possibilities in the air, but very much in the air. Um, at the moment, I'm happy, you know, back in the theatre. I'm all right as long as I'm working. You see, even two weeks, I know this is a general cry, but even two weeks, and I was, you know, I thought, you know, I'd like to be acting again. I really needed to. When you say acting, are you prepared now to... Uh limit the scope of your media to films if the career develops that way and give up the theatre and television? Well, I would be prepared to do that because I think if you have a break in films, if you make a name in films, then you can select your work and you can say to yourself, 
and to anyone else who's interested in you. I've had enough of films for a while. I'd now like to go back to the theatre, and you can do a good part, and you can choose what you want to do. I'd like to do some television. I've never done any. Because um, I just want to try and con conquer the medium, you know. Um, but certainly, if films came along, and if it seemed to be progressing in that way, I would be very happy. But I can't, I don't see that happening. I think maybe I'll make the odd film if I'm lucky enough to. But I see myself as a theatre lady. You know, Marlon Brando, you mentioned Streetcar Named Desire. Mm -hmm. I remember reading an article by Marlon Brando during the run of that play when he said, I see myself as a theatre man. I will always be a theatre man. Nothing will ever change it. I might do a film in Hollywood, but I will always end up on Broadway. Streetcar Named Desire, which closed in 1950, was the last play he did on Broadway. He's never been in a play since. And I think he suffered for it. I really do. Because the, the excitement of Brando is now kind of swallowed in technique. You know, I think it's a great shame. So in a sense, you might have learned a lesson from him saying that. Mm -hmm. But you think that you would be able if you wanted to, to have the strength of mind to turn down the contract, provided you're comfortably off, if there's a play you wanted to do. Right. Mm -hmm, you would. Mm. Um, any plans for television? No. No plans. There's um, a possibility, but again, it, that everything's so vague, of doing something. But, you know, that, as I said, nothing's, nothing's certain. I would very much like to, cause, just to see what it's like. Do you think of yourself as an actress of wide range or as someone who will emerge as a personality? I see myself as an actress of wide range. I think my best thing is comedy. I think I'm most at home in comedy and I love to make people laugh. <clears throat> but I got the opportunity at drama school to play lots of, play lots, mostly mums, I might say, being tall, taller than everybody else. So I was always playing North Country mums. Um, but in fact, that was a very good thing. I think that's a very good way to approach learning a trade like acting. Because I had to um, get a certain maturity to play the older parts that I played. And I was always complaining, always going up and saying, now look, it's about time I played something my own age. But in fact, when the first part I played out of drama school was the knack at Watford. And she was a girl of 18 or something. And the experience of playing older people was invaluable. You know, I think it's good to work that way in. You know, it gives you a certain stability and a certain but confidence on the stage. You know, a weight, really. As is often the case with uh, people who are actors and actresses, there was a tendency on the part of the critics to assume you were a personality and up the junction, that your right. natural bubbling effervescence was coming through. Um, does this matter to you, or do you want to prove something? I certainly don't want to be um, typed as that lady you know, because she's, she's a, a golden-hearted girl, but she's very unattractive in many ways. And I really went the whole hog. You know, we used to do most of our own makeup and decide on our own clothes. And I great beehives and thick makeup and turquoise sparkles right up to there. Horrible diamante brooches all over the place and rings on every finger, you know. Um, so, and I, I got very close to the lady, you know, and felt, very at home with her. And I mean, I think there could be a possible, uh, you know, a great possibility of people saying, well, she does that well, let's put her in that if something else comes up. And you'll I'd fight like that. to avoid that very strongly. You'll fight it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will. All right, let's do a color test. 